I just switched to the iPhone 14 Pro after 12 years of using Android. And I have to tell you, it's not that easy. The iPhone may have a great camera, better battery life, and higher raw performance, but it lacks some basic smartphone functions, and that is annoying. First, there is no back button. In most apps, you will find it here on the top left corner, but wait, it could say back, or it could be an arrow, or it could just be an X. It's not the same every time, fellows. Also, it's not at the same spot every time. It could be on the top right corner, or even bottom left. So you really gotta keep looking. Sure, few apps will allow you to go back a step by swiping from the left in rare scenarios, so you really just have to try your luck. I mean, Android phones have a back button and that is the first thing you're going to miss on the iPhone. Second, phone and call management is a nightmare. First of all, it's only going to store last 100 calls. And that, by the way, includes call from all other apps like WhatsApp, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, and so on. I mean, I can't even access my call logs from four days ago. Second, there's no option to record phone calls. A lot of Android phones come with a built-in option to record phone calls, but on the iPhone... Third, there is no T9 dialing. On Android, I can just type G-A-U-R-A-V and just call the one I want to get to. On the iPhone, you have to open the dialer, then contacts, then search and type the name or go to Spotlight and search the full name to get to them. That is tedious. And Truecaller, a very popular caller ID service, doesn't work 100% of the times as it does on Android. I mean, your iPhone. And that's the one thing, the phone part, that you should do really well. And if you think this is enough, Listen to this. Let's say you're on a WhatsApp call and you get a regular phone call on the iPhone. The only two options you've got is either you decline the new incoming call or you disconnect your WhatsApp call and then accept the incoming call. Why? Look, on Android, here, if I'm on WhatsApp call and I get an incoming, I can pick up that call and it just puts my WhatsApp call on hold so I can jump right back into it. And this problem in iPhone is not limited to just WhatsApp. The options to switch calls, it keeps changing depending on which app you're currently in. Just look at what I get for an incoming call on WhatsApp versus what I get for an incoming call on Skype. And so if you guys are in and out of meetings and phone calls, you're going to want to stick to Android. And now let's talk about the typing experience, which I think is quite poor. First of all, the accuracy of Apple keyboards gesture typing is not at the same level as Google keyboard. And sure, you can install Google keyboard on the iPhone, but it's still not the same. First, I don't get the same accuracy. Second, there is no dedicated number row. I can't even adjust the height of the keyboard like I can on Android phones. And I don't get any of the useful tools as I do on Android. And guess what? there is no clipboard on Apple phones. Like on Android, if I copy something somewhere, it immediately shows up for pasting within the keyboard. It's so neat and swift, and I can easily access my previously copied content and paste it wherever I need it. You're really going to miss that on the iPhone. And I really miss the fingerprint sensor. Look, the face unlock works like an absolute charm on the iPhone, undoubtedly. But it does mean that I have to bring it up to my face or bring my face down to it for it to unlock. A lot of times, I just like the flexibility of unlocking without having to look at it. It is handy at times and I definitely miss it. All right, now, if you're a WhatsApp user, you're in a world of pain. First, chats is the fourth tab after status, calls, camera. Okay, whatever. Second, you can't just select chats by long pressing them. You have to click on edit first and then you can multi-select chats. Okay, now let's say you want to forward photos from one chat to the other. On Android, you could just long press and just select, select, select and send it ahead. On the iPhone, you've got to figure it out. So you long press on one photo, click forward and now it lets you select more photos to forward. A full extra step for no reason. Same goes for sending photos. Like on Android, you will just click on camera and multi-select photos. On the iPhone, you can only select one for the first time and then you click on plus to add more. That's quite lame. And the worst of it, if you're on a WhatsApp video call and you want to do something else on your phone and you snap out of it, your video is paused and only your voice is going through in that call. Like on Android, it becomes this picture-in-picture -picture thing, right? 
so you can do something else and still see each other and talk. Now, I don't care whether this is a WhatsApp issue or an iOS issue. It's an issue for me as a WhatsApp user on iPhone, period. And that honestly is a pretty bad experience. I also cannot take scrolling screenshots on the iPhone except for in Safari. So hang on, let's say I'm on the S22 Ultra. I can take a screenshot while on Instagram and then click here to take a longer screenshot and click again and take an even longer screenshot. And I get this now, which I can then save or share it with whoever. On the iPhone, I don't get any such option. You either just take a single screenshot and that's about it, or you take a screenshot in Safari where you get the option to convert into a full page PDF. And guys, these are more of the big issues or the experiential issues on the iPhone, but there are actually countless more annoying things about the iPhone. For example, iPhone won't let you change your hotspot name without changing the device name. You can't share your Wi-Fi internet through hotspot on other phones. You can do that on a few Android phones. You can't pause while recording a video. Changing or applying a custom ringtone is not as straightforward on the iPhone. No support for multitasking, split screen, pop-up view, or picture in picture for many apps. There isn't a USB-C compatibility as it is a global standard. And there is no easy way to transfer anything from your Windows computer to your iPhone without actually jumping through hoops like iTunes or something. Look, the iPhone is a really good phone, but when you've been on an Android phone, these are some of the issues that you are going to face. And so if you're someone who constantly switches between meeting calls on Skype or Microsoft Teams and regular phone calls, the iPhone is going to drive you crazy. And if you're in a business where you rely on call recordings or call logs, the iPhone is not gonna be of much help. See, Android in general just offers more flexibility, more functionality, and that too forms part of the experience. But hey, if these are non-issues for you on the iPhone or that you can work around these issues, then definitely stick with the iPhone or move to the iPhone because you get longer OS support, better performance, better battery life, and in general, you get a premium design as well. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. What are some of your points that I may have missed? That would be good to see. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon, and mark all. I'll see you guys in the next one.